Hello, everyone. My name is Mandy Matthews, and I am the manager of community engagement for American East Symphony. I am here with AYS music director Carlos Iscaray and AYS executive director Tara Esquivel to reflect and share tips on how we produced the fall concert um, on November 1st, 2020. We learned so much and are ready to share our process uh, and tips with you as you plan for uh, more digital content and for your community and for your orchestra. This conversation is in an interview format with questions in three main categories, artistic planning and programming, logistics and final reflection and teachings. Let's dive in, shall we? <laughs> do it. Let's do it. So this question is for both Tara and Carlos, whoever wants to jump in first can. The fall concert was different from any of the virtual content previously produced in 2020. And I think different from any content that AYS has produced in the past. So where did you start with crafting the program? There were obviously a lot of considerations, uh, especially this was totally new. Um, we did the virtual gala back in May and that was definitely made to feel like a gala. There were um, a cooking demonstration to honor our caterer. There was a fundraising ask, um, but this one was specifically created to be a concert, really focused on performance, um, not as much talking, not you know the non-musical content. So that uh, sort of shaped the the overall content, and then you know, we wanted to involve as many musicians as possible. And it kind of started, the, the snowball started rolling down the hill from there. Yeah, well, from from uh, from my end, I would say that the fall concert was, uh, as Tara described, a, a first, uh, let's call it orchestral performance of sorts after our gala. So our gala was also a performance um, like that, but but obviously it was serving a very specific purpose, which was to secure the future of the organization and, and to, to, to also keep our musicians active and so on and so forth. Um, we learned a lot from that process. And at the, so remember that AYS has, has in a way a dual um, mission in a, in a way, well, we're, we're a performing organization, right? We're sharing music and all that with the community at large whether it's direct performance or virtual, um, but we also have um, that other side of what do we provide to our fellows, to our musicians. And, and, and one thing we learned very early on with our virtual gala was that, um, well, you know, for musicians, it's, uh, it's, it's important to be making music <laughs> together. It's just for the soul, not just, I mean, just, just being active, keeping challenging ourselves. Um, so with the fall performance, we wanted to um, think of it as much as possible as an actual performance in the sense that we're, we're um, delivering a product or some, you know, an artistic product to, to our virtual audience. And like any concert that one programs, we wanted to have some sort of um, thread or something that keeps it together. Sometimes it's just a, a good combination of works or if there's a message. Well, here it was kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious <laughs> that the, the thread is that we're, we're doing it, you know, like this and, and we're just in this alternate reality. Um, we had a very specific um, sort of parameters that we had to work um, with so, it, but but as Tara said, we wanted to involve as many people as we could. So for some musicians, uh, we found it to be easier, like with the string players or so, you know, to it was easier to bring them together in a hall, working alongside with the you know with with the authorities, but also with with um, with the hall itself, um, and making that happen. So we knew that we could fit up to. 20 some a number of musicians there. Uh, then maybe a few percussionists and, and another, but and we did that in a small, in a smaller uh, group, that piece that I wrote. And, but, and we did it from the, from the warehouse where those instruments are, are normally, so we wouldn't have to deal with transportation. And then of course there was the wind element. Again, we wanted to involve as many as we could and 
you know, fortunately there's this wonderful piece, the Stravinsky um, Symphony of Wind Instruments that um, huge challenge to put it together, but yet we, we had learned quite a bit from, from the, from our, uh, from our gala. So all that, you know, from all those lessons, we were like, we can put something together that really makes sense. And we can continue also to, um, we, we, we also wanted to continue our commitment from before COVID, like for example, performing um, music by living composers, by women composers. We had made that pledge and so, so all that. So that's one, that's one we, uh, in, uh, talked to Jesse Montgomery, who was very gracious and she participated too. She, she did a little introduction for us before we played her piece. So anyways, all of that was part of, so in that regard, it was much like putting a concert together, like, like any concert. Oh, who's our artist? Who's our, who can we, what can we do, blah, blah, blah. It was just a, how we get it done that was, a, well, completely different. I hope to dive further into that, how we got it done <laughs> as we go forward. But something I wanted to brought up, uh, bring up um, that you mentioned, Maestro, and also our director of orchestra operations, Isabel, when I interviewed her was we were producing one concert and normally pre-pandemic times that would all happen at one venue. But for this concert, there were two venues, Royce Hall and then Cal Perk LA but then all the homes of the players who were in Stravinsky. So Isabel and I were chatting on how interesting that was of working with all these different venues to put this one big event together, um, which that was a feat, I would say. Each venue had their own different needs and things that we had to work with to make this happen. Well, not only that, but we, we before we get into the actual technical element of how we got the music done, we, it, it's, it, it even goes further because we did all that without a central command of sorts. You know, we have, I mean, everybody, even in our staff, most people were at, in their home. So we, we have literally been able to create art through email, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and texting. And I mean, I believe that we have all um, update and go through several cycles of updating ourselves uh, technologically and um, but this also creates uh, in, at the end this is just a gadget what I think we did mostly here was to think in the abstract how can we make an event take place um, and in a way uh, much like anything that you're sharing for a for a public you know for, for an audience you, there is a competitive element how do we stand up what can we make about it that is uh, you know that is uh, that is unique. Uh, that you know. So uh, and of course the the quality as well. So all of those things were were uh, were a part of it. The setting, it, making it happen, um, which is you know where Isabel um, Thoreau, who who I work with, uh, just <laughs> on a day to day basis, we were just basically trying to figure out. How do we do this? Um, it was, in a way, a very disciplined approach and being super clear on what we want, what we wanted. We're very fortunate that we already had a good selection process on how we get our fellows, how we get our musicians. They know that the standard is like that. The auditions are done uh, very much like a professional audition. So, it, it even your first contact with AYS, you already know that that the pace is. It's, it's like that, like it is in the real world where the clock is ticking, yeah? So a lot of it was like that. It was basically, we needed to say, hey, we have very little time, very little, um, like if we had some rehearsal time, that we had to keep it to the bare minimum because of the health considerations, right? We can't linger and blow. Uh, so a lot of the preparatory things that were done was before they even got the music, just just uh, and also making sure that they were. I'm sure Isabel might have mentioned that for them to feel safe that we were really, really, um, uh, you know, taking every single precaution. That gives you um, a tranquility where you can focus on the music, you know, where you're not going, oh, how's it going to be? You, you mean we? Even myself, as a as, as a, the performance side of Carlos here, I felt that I could focus completely on that. Okay. Um, now, but that, but that, yes, as you said, we had four distinct 
project, each one, uh, two that are similar because they were in the same place, but the Jesse Montgomery's piece and the Britain, but still, I mean, those are two separate pieces. Um, then there was the Stravinsky and then my own piece, Bloom, and all those had to be thought of as, as sort of three different worlds. It's, one, it's like one of these films where you have uh, uh, one sequence where we're following a certain character and the uh, uh, cinematography is quite different to another character's, you know, so, so yeah. you got like three worlds and we needed to be able to think that way. Tara, I'm sure that that's that seemed to be the way we were dealing with this, wasn't it? Yeah, it, you know, so many things were influenced by what we could do and what we were allowed to do and what we couldn't do. Um, thankfully, we could be in Royce. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of restrictions, obviously, no audience. Um, the musicians had to be spaced eight feet apart. So, you know, people couldn't share a stand and sit right next to each other. So everybody had their own stand. And that meant instead of 100 musicians on the stage, we could only have 19 or 20 musicians on the stage. Um, and we had a film crew, which we'll dive into, I think, a little later in the conversation. Um, and, but it opened up doors too, like, when pre-COVID would we have ever said, hey, let's record a piece in the percussion warehouse. <laughs> like it just wouldn't have come up, but it was so cool. Um, so, you know, it was a combination of balancing what can't we do? What, you know, what normal things that we sort of took for granted or were really typical before are out of the question and what new windows does that open up and uh, you know, in, in some ways, you know, we try to look for silver linings. We started with a blank slate. Um, we had to follow the LA County uh, public health regulations for film and TV production, known as Appendix J. Um, so we literally, I mean, you know, when we thought about transitioning from producing live concerts to producing online concerts, the audience was different. The audience is a film and TV audience, right? You're seeing it on a screen. Um, and that shift is really profound in a lot of ways, but now literally <laughs> being in Royce Hall, following Appendix J as a film and TV production crew, it, it totally changed everything. Um, so Carlos, you can talk about sort of, if you're sitting in a live concert, you can program a lot of different orchestral works, but when you're programming for a virtual audience and when you're programming for a piece that needs to be um, filmed and edited, <laughs> how does that change your artistic decisions? So in a way, again, we, I, I actually thought about this uh, two ways. And one was the normal capture of, of a performance, which in that, I mean, we, that's, I mean, even AYS, we've been doing that for years. Um, capturing, we felt that we needed to, to do more than the like archival type of, of, of capture. So we needed to, you know, beef it up a little bit and make it not more than a little bit and make it a real um, statement from like a, from a cinematography point of view. And, you know, you, you do feel the pressure if you're, um, in, in the, you know, in, in Southern California and saying, well, we got to make a really good video. The standard is quite high. And if the half your board are, are very much involved in the Hollywood scene, it's sort of, again, something that you want to make sure that, that we're delivering on that expectation. But then there's the other side, which is sort of this out of the box, uh, kind of making is sort of building the plane as you fly um, <laughs> part of it, which is, um, um, well, that, the, the good examples will be all these virtual collage things that we did and the creation of repertoire for that specific moment, which is that, I mean, that was the, the main focus. Very early on, even from our from our gala, I, I felt that it was, there, there is a great value in in creating something for 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 the for the event, whatever that event might be, uh, because I noticed that most people were doing some sort of collage, video collage of of known repertoire. So it's like uh, playing into the 
um, nostalgic element. Oh, we miss being on stage. Of course, we all miss miss being on stage. But I think that was uh, that's sort of I don't need to double down on that. Uh, hence, the creation of something new. Also, uh, well, I mean, it's you're viewing it like something that you don't know, and you know, and it's and it's created for this particular circumstance. So, Bloom had uh, th that's the piece that I wrote for for the our two percussionists and and keyboardist was playing also computer sounds and all that. Um, well, once we identify that the possibility of doing something there at that place. Um, we were already licensing music from Jesse Montgomery for their other stuff in the Britain too. We didn't want to do like a whole different, you know, so it was just like, well, look, I got a percussion warehouse. I can put a bunch of electronic sounds in there. I'll just write something. <laughs> that's, it was as easy. I mean, that's, that's sort of, I mean, that's, and that's also, I think, a spirit of what we were already after um, I be believe deeply that there's a indie classical scene that's gonna keep uh, brewing and growing. We have uh, instrumentalists or orchestral players who are also composers, creators, and you know, and uh, and uh, in creating not just in the musical part, but also thinking as as how you present it. Um, on you know, like for example, this this screen stuff. Um, and then with the with the symphony of, of winds again that, that one was a, a not a hail mary but it was something I gotta we gotta get some winds in there and and again with it was at the time that we were planning it um, there was so much uncertainty about the aerosols and what you can you know I think there's still uncertainty about that so we wanted really to play it safe for everybody, especially for our fellows. And, but at the same time, you know, challenge them. I mean, they're amazing players. The music, that, that's how it was chosen. Uh, it was the Stravinsky, the name says it all, Symphony of Wooden Instruments. It's a piece that has a lot of, um, it's, it has, for the most part, it's a, it's a rhythmically stable piece in the sense that there's not too much uh, Rubato, the stretching of time. There's some, but 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 Stravinsky in this piece, especially, especially so it was kind of you know the click goes very stably, mostly through the piece. So I felt that we could do something with that, so it wouldn't be too hard for the for our musician. I mean, it was incredibly difficult. I mean, now now that we've done, it, I was like, what were we thinking? Because it was super hard. <laughs> But because but, you know but, it was a remote ensemble and everyone was recording from home, that yeah. contract feel was made a lot of sense for that. Yeah, yeah, and at, well, in fact, we had to generate a a specific um, sort of soundtrack thing for them to follow along uh, with this uh, video of me conducting and. And uh, I made it differently because some people work better hearing the whole ensemble. Some of them wanted to hear just the click. Some of them, you know, so I made, gave them options. That's one of the beauties of the technology. You can adjust it very quickly, you know, and, and it, oh, we need something with, uh, with a louder click. Then I did that. Um, but uh, in their case, the reference recording that was used, I mean, that was another thing I wanted us to have our version. So, I mean, obviously being very honest, true to the score of Stravinsky was very specific, but at the same time, I didn't want to just go um, and just grab a, just anybody's recording and, you know, here, do that. No, I mean, come on. Uh, that would be like classical karaoke and I'm <laughs> against that. So, um, but so for my piece, Geometric Unity, which we did for the gala, that was easier because I just created a, a, a sort of good quality MIDI, MIDI sound file that they could listen to. And it sounds very close to what an orchestra would sound like. So they got the idea of it and that's how they recorded it. And it worked out beautifully. But for this, I mean, that's, I mean, this is a piece that is known, you know, especially among wind players. So what do you do with that and um, I mean there I and I I, I have the <laughs> the file here because uh, I figured I'd show it to you. What I did was I we didn't work from uh, from a recording. I just basically have all the recordings that I liked that I felt were good matches with each other, 
and I did this sort of uh, this sort of <laughs> I don't know if you can see it there. Yes. This, this sort, of, sort of multi. So these are several recordings that are known, you know, the, and some of them very very obscure also. Mashup. And I put, yeah, so I put those together um, so that you could hear them playing, you know, as as a as one. So they they you know I'll give you an ex very tiny example here. Uh, maybe from here. See, that's one orchestra playing. Here's another one. Yeah, so you can't really tell um, unless you're very, very picky. So here comes the first orchestra back, that little blue. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, you can see it. Anyway, so the whole thing was conceived kind of like that to be done and and so we put all those together like that like one thread and once i had the thread then i did the click that went and i, and I sort of adjusted it too you know manipulated it uh in a logic session here myself and then from there i had to create a click track that went with it so how do you make a click track from something that's organic i literally went like this you know following the tempo and myself um, doing that. And um, that I had to also modify and, and, and cause I mean, that was, that's, that's kind of gross to be hearing of someone <laughs> going like this, right? Um, so, but what, what, what I, so I turned that into, into the mod, so changed the sound frequency of it. So it sounded like a, more like the normal click that you would hear in a, a recording session, like in Hollywood studio kind of thing. And that's 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 what they had as a reference. That and, and a video of me going, you know, recording from right here, from this chair, sort of in case they wanted to see the patterns. And and that was it um, for them. They they got sent. Uh, so so then we split the ensemble sort of into three four layers of players, principal players, and some in the bottom, like uh, for makes it easier to put into. So then we got those files first. So with our sound engineer, Francesco, uh, who's uh, fantastic. Um, it was great working with him. And um, we put that together. We sent that to the second group, then to the third group. Once we had that, we sent all that to, this, uh, to the video group, uh, Paxeros. Um, and meanwhile, we were really fixing all the audio. Well, the, so, and, and at the end, like, two days before or one day before showtime, it finally was uh, um, together, yeah? Um, but it was uh, kind of like that. The the other pieces, like Jessie Montgomery, I'm a huge fan of, of her work. I knew we were gonna do something with strings, uh, most likely for the big ensemble, and it was, it was like a no brainer. She's a, a, a great violinist, great chamber musician also. And then the Britain, is um well that's just i believe that's one of the best string works there is i mean it's, it's basically like a symphony for strings um it has um I, I also like the fact that it was dedicated to his mentors or so there's something sort of pedagogical in the spirit of the piece um so uh, and it's it's written as a variation so so something it's still very much something tied to the traditions that we come from. So, and, and so I just, honestly, I just thought that was a fantastic piece. It's also written in set of variations. So it, uh, the, the movements are sort of compartmentalized and it made it a little bit easier to, to, to have a, a concept for the video part and the editing. Um, it just becomes a little, easier than one long thread, like a, like something Wagnerian, right? Which is, geez, this phrases I can take like two minutes, you know, and then, and then it's all like this robot that makes it a little bit harder, uh, at least for this first project. Yeah, it ended up, the, the short movements uh, ended up being really beneficial. Um, and I, I'm sure that is part of your consideration, but the filming and not having much rehearsal time and, the musicians sort of learning the music on their own before they could get into rehearsals. Um, I, well, it's also, it's, it's, <laughs> well, it's also, I mean, even, even 
um, we got to also think, I mean, and, and this was also a very, very strong consideration. They haven't played any music live or any, you know, in, in months. Just, just that, you, that's pretty depressing for a musician. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you want a piece that is jam packed with, with a lot of emotions and that this is one of those pieces. I mean, it's got beautiful, intimate moments, but it's got also this luscious, full, full on kind of stuff that you expect from strings. There's a, there's an Italian aria, there's a French Baroque dances. I mean, there's all sorts of musics within that piece. So um, I think for, um, for, for, for each of their particular tastes, I mean, again, every orchestra is, it's, it's a micro society, right? Where you have people with all sorts of tastes. I think with this one, we were able to, to engage every single one. And that's what, I mean, from, from the very first um, rehearsal, when we came together finally after months of not making music together, it was very palpable. I think this piece had a great deal to do with it. Yeah. We're starting to talk about the filming um, and how the selection of the pieces really informed how we wanted the visuals to look. So Tara, can you talk a little more about your approach with selecting a videographer for the strain ensemble? Sure. Um, so all of 2020, things were just changing so quickly. Um, from day to day, the, you know, the infection rates, what was permitted, what was not permitted. Um, and that really compacted our production timeline because there were just so many scenarios and so many, well, what if we do this or what if we need to do that? Um, and because everything was, there was so much uncertainty and the production timeline was much shorter than it normally would have been. I really had to find someone that was already familiar with AYS um, that we had worked with before. We didn't have time or the mental bandwidth to do a long vetting process of like an RFP and new people that we never worked with before. Um, and so I was thinking about the videographers that AYS has worked with before and you know several that are wonderful um, but Phil, Philip Hollihan came to mind. Um, he's been working with AYS for, I don't know, maybe 10 years, um, a long time, <laughs> and has made a lot of videos, done a lot of beautiful photo shoots for AYS, and it really needed to be someone that this wasn't going to just be a job because it, everything was so new. They needed to be a problem solver. They needed to say yes and. They needed to really be in it. And the end goal would be to make something beautiful to benefit the musicians, to benefit the audience, and to create beautiful art. Um, so Philip seemed like the number one choice and he did a great job. Um, a lot of problem solving. <laughs> um, he's a Hollywood cinematographer. He's worked on, you know, massive TV shows and movies. He's worked on indie films. So he had that, that knowledge of how to get things um, together and make it work. And he's yeah. very patient. Yes, <laughs> which was probably the most important criteria. Um, and like Carlos kind of said, you know, we've had a lot of archive videos from past concerts. This had to stand out. This was a music film. Um, it, it couldn't look like a concert archive that like, sorry, you couldn't be there. Here's our second best attempt to capture it. This had to be beautiful. It had to bring the intimacy of a live performance to the audience members. So um, I knew that Philip had that eye for how to capture the beauty of the performance, the, the skill of the musicians, the, you know, the dynamic, movements of Carlos conducting and he was wonderful. We received great feedback after the fall concert about how the audience members were able to feel really close and as if they're sitting next to the players and really see their technical abilities. I think Philip did in our, in our film crew, he, there were many people on set there and a lot of different uh, camera, camera people working all the different angles. There was one camera that was like really that like went down into the stage. Um, so that I, I, I would think too, that brought up a big, um, a big part of how we developed the stage plot and 
thinking about safety and distance, uh, the film crew was definitely a presence there that we had to keep in mind when thinking about how we positioned the musicians on stage. Am I correct well, in thinking that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that that was, um, that we had uh, feedback like that because a lot, a lot went into this, uh, in the, into the video composition part of it. Um, uh, what I mean by that is that very often um, us musicians sort of are maybe intimidated by, by, the, by the video side and, and, and we sort of delegate it. And very often there's some people who do it wonderfully and, and that's it, but, but it's, it's, it's very, it, I think until now it's been very compartmentalized. And I think that's starting to change um, in, in a good way. And in this way, I, I like very much working with Bill because he was also very open to, to trying out um, the, something where the, a lot of the decisions that are made as far as like camera uh, focus, where things, I mean, where are we gonna be looking at? It came from the score. So literally um, there, there was a, so we had a, a stage plot that was shared with me. And then uh, with that, uh, alongside with the score, I could go like sort of um, bar by bar. And I mean, like within the bar, there could be four or five indications of things that happened there where like the, you know, maybe there's an arpeggio that starts in the basses and it goes all the way up to the violins and it comes back. So that all was written in a way where I felt that uh, with the number of cameras that we had, we had enough um, options so that that could be annotated into the score. Does that make sense? Yeah, and yeah. We, we worked with a score reader also, right? Who played a big part with working with you. Exactly, and that was the, 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 the last element uh, was to be, a, be able to have someone who, who so the score um, that was shared with, with him was basically the music as it's normally written probably some music indications there for me for for the ensemble but at the same time he had other another set of instructions that is what happens that we should be looking at um and 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 yeah having that with with the video then that way the camera crew has had also a performance to go through in a way it's not just oh you know you capture here but there's a plan for where this one or where the crane that you were talking about that yeah. hovers above. Uh, there are specific moments in the music that were more um, uh, sort of that suggest this sort of gliding feel. Yeah, it happens so much with string music. So all of that uh, was uh, sort of carefully planned. Uh, and then obviously Philip also made a bunch of his own decisions, but there was well, it's it's kind of the way classical music really is. You have the score, but it, there's within the score, there's a lot that you do with it. Um, but we had a um, a very clear plan for for how we wanted it to look from the music score. So that's what I mean. That's I would guess is the main difference. It's not. It was a uh, um, yeah. It, 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 all the this, the visual decisions were musical decisions. Yeah, Carlos wrote kind of like a storyboard. And it was so interesting because we, as the audience, could sort of see the performance as Carlos sees it. Yeah. Um, and so he wrote out sort of the storyboard and, you know, which instruments or which musicians specifically should be highlighted during which bars. And then, you know, there was a little negotiation with Philip about the, you know, the realities of how many cameras we had and the cinematography. And, you know, they came together very quickly on how it would look. And then the score reader was sort of the translator between Carlos and the film crew. And they all had earpieces. Um, and we, we actually did the dress rehearsal with the cameras. So the cameras are part of dress rehearsal, not only so they could get the feel of how the music moved, but also so the musicians could get used to working with the film crew right in their face. Um, and so the, the score reader, would say, you know, okay, camera two, move your focus from the cellos to the violas. 
Um, so in those in those in between parts where the you know maybe camera one was focusing on Galia or concert master, another camera would have to move the camera and shift the focus to get ready for the next shot. So he was you know calling the show as we say in in theater management, um, and it was he was incredible. The way that we filmed your piece Bloom was completely different. <laughs> Absolutely, Don't absolutely fun Everything in its own different. way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but did you, did you like going into filming of that piece, did, did you do a similar process with the streams piece of, of uh, having the transitions from the score with the film? That one, in that one, we didn't need to do that because in fact, we were, well, we, this one, we were trying out stuff too. This was our little sort of uh, experiment on how to get this sort of, um, uh, well, let's, I, I keep saying the classical hip thing scene, yeah, and but also that involves the new technologies that we have available to us. Um, so the way we film the stuff at the hall is is more of a conventional. I mean, it's it's like we the way we planned it and all that stuff. I think was uh, very uh, there's great innovation there. But ultimately, it was a camera crew with someone behind the camera. Here, we were trying actual, you know, tablets and 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 phones and stuff, and it was a lot more like kind of guerrilla art making, <laughs> yeah, from from a warehouse and and with these instruments, and we put some electronic stuff on top, you know. So uh, the way we filmed that was quite different. And Tara was one of our film crew in this one uh, alongside. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, the, I, I, sh I should point out that this is also about expanding our horizons. I mean, uh, our, 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 our musicians are, we're already encouraging that even before COVID, hence our creative fellow, Alex Mansour, who's a cellist, pianist, and he composes everything at a very high level. I mean, so, so I try to push myself too, and well, well, then our staff here came to the rescue with all the tablets, and we were able to work with um, Francesco, our our, um, our sound engineer, who was very much into this project. So we set up a bunch of microphones. That was pretty sad, and then we did uh, what was it, three or four runs, uh, Tara, with with different. Um, yeah, the I, we had a bunch of iPads one that were and ran it through and then set up the iPads at a different configuration to get some different angles ran it again um, yeah so that so that's what we did we had like um, I forget how many three or four iPads that we were putting in different places um, through the through the performance but what you hear is one of the performance straight through there's no there's no like editing or any like any there's it's not a patchy like the like this Stravinsky um, and it was, I mean, it was wonderful. It was, I mean, that one was, uh, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. And I think it sets up uh, options for performances and also for people who are considering doing their own kind of, you know, weird kind of creating an alternate spaces and things like that. You know that, that that's an option and you can, uh, that, was, that was an actual performance. We were very fortunate to have our board member, Billy Sullivan, who's uh, also, uh, he runs a great studio. He's a percussionist and he knows a lot about the electronics part of it. So he helped us out setting it up um, with um, with our uh, keyboardist and, and, and just, just all the electronic part. Uh, he was a great help. Uh, and then Tara and uh, uh, who else was there? Rich. Rich. I mean, uh, yeah, so a couple of our staff were there, and so we played for them, and then we shared it to the world with the world. It was fun for for me to watch after um, uh, hearing about how you know I was part of the process behind the scenes a little bit. Who's going to be there? Who's going to film? But it was fun to see how it all came together because it kind of. In COVID and pandemic world, we've been so uh, in our own spaces, you know. But it, it's, it looked like the four of you just called each other up, so like, "Hey, let's let's meet at the warehouse and and play the marimbas, and I'll do the keyboard, and, and I'll conduct it." It was just, it was a nice coming together moment of, of that, um, where, yeah, I think it was a, it was a nice mix in comparison to the Strains pieces and the Stravinsky piece too. Um, so that was definitely a joy to watch and really fun.
Um, well, I'm glad you liked it. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> and that's I, I, I should mention that um, until I arrived to that warehouse and, and, and heard our two fantastic uh, percussionists that were rehearsing just before we, we would start, I hadn't heard any any live music. I didn't realize that I hadn't heard any live music on from from whenever March or February, the last performance I did, to till then. Um, it 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 felt uh, very special to hear your own music <laughs> as you're arriving. At, oh wait, and then, and then just the sound world and uh, those two marimbas, a uh, very good blend between them, and they were just. I don't know. There was something very special in making that happen. Um, in in even at, well, you notice that there I'm conducting at one part of it, and it was, yeah. that wasn't planned. That wasn't planned at all. I mean, we were. I mean, it was written so that they could. But but the way that they were set up because of the logistics. I mean, they had the two percussions here, and but the keyboardist had to be sort of behind. You see it in the video. It's, it was not the normal setup where you have a broad stage and you can everybody can see each other. So she couldn't see them well. So I was like, I'll just stand here in the middle <laughs> and and lead that little bit. It was like a basically just a transition. So even that part was a little bit kind of like had a jam session spirit to it. Yeah. Um, and doing it that very fresh. So we've talked a little bit about the, the virtual and remote audience so far, but let's dive a little bit deeper into that conversation. Um, either Tara or Maestro, what did you find particularly challenging about producing a fall concert for the digital landscape and the, the audience on, online? Um, I mentioned before the, the change from a live audience to an online audience, it just, it's obvious that it's different, but the different nuances of how it's different just kept coming up. Um, so in May, when we did our virtual gala, it was sort of the beginning of the pandemic. It was like the Wild West. There weren't a lot of other virtual galas to look to, for example. So we just did whatever. And audiences were fine with whatever. <laughs> so it was really an open book. But by the time October, November rolled around, more arts organizations were starting to get into producing online content. Um, audience members started to have a, a little bit of expectation about how it would go. We were all on, you know, those of us that work on Zoom were on Zoom a lot. So sort of some norms had been set up for what online content would look like. Um, but we, the AYS staff, we are an event production company in some ways. We're an educational institution. We're an event production company. But suddenly we had to become a film production company. Um, and so every member of our staff learned a lot of stuff on the fly. Our staff is amazing. <laughs> um, and, you know, Carlos mentioned we're in Hollywood. So a lot of people have high expectations of what film production looks like. So on one hand, we had really high expectations from board members and audience members that you know even work in the industry and they know what, what production looks like. And on the other hand, it was a lot easier for our um, DP, Philip Hollihan, cinematographer, to find camera operators, to find the right types of cameras, to rent equipment um, because it's all available. And at that time, a lot of film productions were shut down. So a lot of people were available. Um, so it was, the online audience was challenging, but I think for us, AYS, the most challenging part was just shifting how we produce events. Um, to that, I would add that even having the most minimal amount of, of presence and in, in, in this, for example, having our board member and a couple of other people in for when we did my piece or having even the camera crew and I knew that Tara was around somewhere there while we were doing that you know just uh, personally this is very personal um, if if there's someone to perform for I feel like a performance uh, I don't know it's, it's sort of there's a an awareness uh, element to it 
So it didn't feel like a rehearsal, but obviously the energy of, of a full performance when you have a, um, you know, the, the whole, the whole, the hall full of people and, and you can, I don't know, there's something that you can feed off of that. Um, but at the same time, there is this sort of pressure of you don't want to mess up the one opportunity you have to make some, you know, we're, we, I mean, and the, we really stress this, uh, maybe to the point we were, we were, we might have it even kind of annoying in the sense that this is like something that, that was complex to put together uh, for our musicians. So uh, I really requested that really be ready for it because we're going to have to make, make it happen sort of quickly. So there was a magic to it. There was, I mean, it, it, it was just a, the magic had a different, uh, a different color to it. Yeah. Um, but if you analyze it also from a, from where are we going after this? So obviously we all want to get back to, to, to playing regular concerts for good old folk in who come to the, <laughs> to, to the place. Right. But at the same time, and this has been in our conversations uh, for, for quite a bit. I mean, the, the world is, it's an interconnected world. Here we are having a three-way conversation to different places. People are going to view it from who knows where. So that's also something that was very much in our, in our mind when we did the first gala and everything since that the world's the stage now. Um, if the, 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 the virtual element really um, expands that, I think great number of our, of our musicians are gamers, for example. They, they, they have that, I mean, they have their own lives and they, they go out and hang out and do that. But they also have that, connection with 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 the games that they play you know some of them might be combat games some of them are more like sort of intricate with more drama in there um i there's something in there um something about that that i think in the music world the classical music the orchestral world is an untapped um yet untapped potential in that um, and I think maybe COVID has sped up that process a little bit because I, I definitely felt it coming. I mean, virtual performances, that's not new to COVID, but definitely it has expanded quite a bit, right? And I think AYS has, um, has been a, a, a great platform for all of us to, to keep, um, to, to, to to stay with the times and might maybe even do some pioneering work in, in things that have not been tried before. And we I think we've done that already, but we still love Beethoven. We still love Bach. We still need Mozart, not just we love it, we need it because that's, that's where they, remember everything that they wrote at the time was the most complex thing ever done. I mean, an opera by Mozart at the time was uh, a, basically a, an impossible task made possible by great minds. So we, we, we try to follow that spirit, yeah, of, of daring to do things and, uh, and still wanting to connect with a, as broad of an audience as possible. We've, this is something I wanted to actually ask and expand deeper. Um, Tara, maybe you have something to include too of what what was a positive that came out of the, the virtual fall concert and this new way of viewing concerts? Carlos was just um, mentioning that. What, what's your perspective, Tara? Um, I think it's really nice. You know, there's nothing like a live concert. There's, there's nothing like it. Even if it's, even if I'm the only audience member in Royce Hall while the orchestra is performing, you know, during filming day, filming the Britain and the Montgomery piece, literally there were two of us sitting in Royce Hall and 1800 empty seats and it was- I was one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> it was a performance, um, but I just kept looking around at all the empty seats and being like, this is so weird. Like, um, but it's really nice to offer everyone that close up look at the fingers moving, at the, the beauty of the bow, of, you know, Carlos's view from the podium. Um, and I think 
of course we want to get back to live concerts but um giving that experience to everyone has been really nice and when we sort of live streamed when we had events online events to watch the concerts together uh it was really cool having the chat functions and seeing audience members chime in and chat throughout their performance well those are a lot of fun and the, and, and sending pictures you know like the watching parties i mean that again it, nothing substitute the, the 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 big performance and everybody together but um but at the same time, this this opens up avenues that, um, you know, I'm thinking, for example, uh, retirement communities and 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 uh, this these places where people are not able to come out that easily, uh, go out and about. I mean, now I think what can be shared with them has improved drastically. Not just uh, I'm not talking just quality, but just just the ability to produce it, the ability to self-produce things and to um, be able to connect there. It, I think it, again, it, it, it's a type of broadening that I think should be welcome. Um, always, of course, with the assurance that, that nothing beats the, the real deal. So starting to wrap up our conversation, looking back now, I think it's been two to three months since since November 1st and our and really production happening in October. Is there something that both of you would have done differently when planning and executing the, the fall concert? What, what advice do you have for, for folks that are going to try this on their own? It's really difficult. Um, I had to think about this question a lot. <laughs> um, with any concert or production or event, there are always the same postmortem questions and comments, right? Could we had could we have had more audience members? Could we have planned more in advance? There's just, you know, the, the evergreen questions that always come up. So I'm I'm not gonna think about those, but um, there was so much uncertainty through the whole process. Um, what's gonna happen, how many musicians are gonna show up, and then all the what ifs, like what if half of the orchestra gets sick the week of the concert? What if Carlos can't be here? What if public health regulations shut us down? Just everything was so uncertain. And so looking back in hindsight, I think it went about as well as it possibly could have, honestly. Um, I could not be more proud of the musicians and Carlos and the staff and the people that joined us for the live stream concert. Yeah, I second everything that Tara said. I'm proud of what, what was done. And I would actually encourage people to, to give it a go. Uh, if they're, I, I would actually double down on it in the sense that um, the, the feeling that 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 I got and I that I've heard about after the fact after we did it was much more like a performance like a, a than other things where it's more like this sort of archival sharing the oh you know we're nostalgic and we miss being with you which we do of course but um, having gone through this it's it's again we were we were very much alive. And we remain very much alive through this whole process, um, and, and I think there's great value in that. Um, I, I, it, I, I would be very, very curious, of, uh, as you mentioned, to know how our fellows and our musicians came to, like, like how they solve their problems. I mean, if you look at the Stravinsky, for example, with the remote recording, some people have a beach in the back. There's another. We, we've done, uh, I think it was in, in my piece, the geometric, there's one with a punching, uh, with a boxing bag and hanging. And so it's, I mean, there's, there's, you know, there may be pets going around a cat somewhere. Yeah. So the, these, these sort of uh, things are all that, it's, it's a window into their world. And, and I think that's uh, something at a, like a kind of as trivia as a kind of learning how they overcame their obstacles. That kind of like bloopers thing. I, I think that's uh, that's uh, funny. I'll never show how I did the hands. <laughs> that was, uh, 
uh, you know, with, with the hands conducting. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I could tell you that even my daughter was involved in that. And I forgot to ask, uh, add her in the credits because she was my official page turner. <laughs> and, uh, these kinds of things I think are funny and, and give a little inside window or how some of these things get done. Um, but ultimately what we did, the project, what we decided on, um, who we wanted to perform, what pieces, what it meant, the feeling I got from the, from, from the players too, from the musicians who were there playing and, and their comments. And I got emails from them saying how wonderful it was uh, to, to, to be able to make music again with their colleagues. So yeah, I would say to anybody who's considering it, uh, yeah, uh, follow the AYS route. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah, my advice is just to do it. Uh, it's never gonna be the perfect time. Just go for it. Make some decisions, take some risks, start somewhere. Um, Set a deadline and do it. Yeah. <laughs> Preferably more than six weeks. I can say that. Six weeks yeah. is not long enough. <laughs> yeah. I think too, well, but, from these conversations that it takes a village um, to, to produce something like this. We've, I know AYS, we leaned on a lot of relationships with, with working with the videographer that we have before. And the score reader was an AYS alumni, actually many alumni helped us in producing this concert. Um, and then my show, your family even being at home <laughs> turning the page for you. I think that would be my advice as someone who, who contributed is just to lean on those relationships and, and that it does take many people in a village to, to produce something beautiful. And speaking of, uh, speaking of family and our village, I would say that uh, our board yes. being incredibly supportive and um, well, I mean, even some of them uh, who, who, for example, we have, uh, uh, you know, Dave Newman, great, uh, composer for known for his uh, Hollywood scores. I mean, he was, uh, he was doing some of this remote stuff for the, for the um, uh, series that he's uh, scoring for. So to have that as a, you know, someone that you could get some advice from and seeing, I mean, they, they have helped us out. All of our board members have helped us out and been incredibly patient and curious, remain curious. So that, um, that completes the equation um, and why we're able to do things and very much feel like a family because that's, that's, that's the feeling um, I get and, 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 and to have a platform where these things can be explored. So um, definitely they were uh, also a big part of it. Yes, I agree. Well, thank you both for, for dedicating some time to reflect, to share our our tips and perspectives on, on the fall concert. And I hope you at home found this conversation useful, interesting, inspiring maybe, as you start to plan your next uh, virtual experience for your audience. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this conversation is part of a larger blog that we're putting together. So we interviewed our director of orchestra operations, Isabel Thoreau, that we mentioned throughout this. And then at your point at the end, Maestro, we are bringing together some perspectives from musicians to have the musician perspective of how that worked for them. <laughs> but you can read all of this on our blog at www.aysymphony.org slash blog and then he, all of the pieces are online on our youtube channel for you to experience if you missed the live stream of it on november 1st so go to youtube type in american youth symphony and then there will be a playlist for the fall concert pieces thank you both thank have you. a great rest of your day and weekend and thank until you. the next one <laughs> likewise take bye. care bye bye <laughs>